So, let's talk about Chicago. Chicago is next, guys. It's, it has to be next. Chicago has to be the next city. The last time we talked about uh, America was uh, about Portland. And I'm going to say thank you to everyone who watched that video, and that's the highest video I've actually got. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it was maybe because of good timing, or the subject was actually good to talk about, or it was the fact it was Portland and somebody was going up against it. It's good for me, but thank you for everyone who watched it. But now, it has to be. The feds have to come for Chicago. It, it has to be that situation, because... This weekend, um, I'm going to show a video clip at the side here of the what Chicago police showed on their YouTube channel of how crazy the situation in Chicago has been. It's been fucking nuts. And it's been like a war zone. Okay, it's been claimed to be like a war zone. And I am not the one to use that term a lot unless it is a war zone. And it's more or less is. It's gone fucking nuts. And looks like the feds are going to be going there next, and I, I hope so. I hope they are, because there's been no word about if they will, but there is a good intent from President Trump to say the feds might be getting involved in Chicago. But, my, may I guess, the weekend before we had the worst shootings in America, worst time for it, and it was like New York State, I believe, New York was the highest amount, the, like went up to 100 or 200 percent of the shooting rate. The amount of people who died was the equivalent of last year in one day. Fucking nuts. This weekend, it's Chicago's turn. Half a dozen miles away, but it's still in America, so it's still relevant. So, what happens in Chicago? Here's footage here of the, the Chicago Police Department having to defend Christopher Columbus statue. And it's fucking nuts, guys. It's, it's intense. You see these guys, they're throwing bottles, they're throwing explosions at the police officers. And it, it, it's, it's crazy to see how bad this has gotten, because it got so bad that, God bless them, the police actually had to fall back, because these guys were fucking armed. And as you see when they eventually goes to the aerial footage, there's like, they are using umbrellas to protect themselves, and they're like, actually properly armed and manufactured and they're just throwing stuff at the police officers. This isn't fucking good guys, what the fuck's going on?
And then it... Why the... Well, the police had the pool hour there because it was just going to get too fucking nuts. There was way too many protesters there and too much... I will call them Antifa terrorists to be there. And it's it went fucking nuts. And... What ended up happening afterwards was fucking, oh man, just to read these articles that's coming out in the America is quite shameful. And we've got one of these main titles that came up was, same old story, 65 shot, dead 10 in Chicago weekend. 65 people are dead shot? What the fuck? Like, it got so bad. People are getting shot left, right and centre in Chicago by Black Lives Matter protesters. There are kids who are getting killed. Nobody gives a shit about them. Same situation. We know the situation of Chicago has been shit. Because it's like, it doesn't matter if you're black, it doesn't matter if you're white, you are still the enemy. Even it says Black Lives Matter, black and black crime in Chicago is probably the highest in the entire United States. And it's a fucking disaster. But you would think out of this whole situation, the mayor of Chicago would be way concerned about this. Because, you know, having 65 people shot, 10 dead, would be quite a situation. If I was in charge of Chicago, there's something going wrong in my city. I would, no doubt. But if it was me, well, if it was me in charge of the city, fucking hell, never put me in charge. Because if you get assholes... You're going to get treated like assholes, and this is why you should never put me in a high position. That's a massive warning I give to anyone, but I still have that opinion of getting high enough. But, like every Democrat leader from every major city or governor and so on, they have rejected the need for government help and everything. And instead of worrying about their own city, where they would support the protesters, the Antifa protesters, the Black Lives Matter protester terrorist, instead of looking at the real problems or the fact that your city's going to complete shit, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, it decides to go on a fucking Twitter rampage instead. Because I don't know why this mayor is such a fucking hypocrite. It's fucking annoying to watch. Instead of worrying about a city, she would love to go on a rampage against the Donald Trump administration and Kayleigh McAnally. If you don't remember who Kayleigh McAnally is, I hope I'm saying her name right. She is that Bonnie girl that has the, she's the press secretary for Donald Trump. And damn, this girl knows how to do her job. She's got a binder with everything in the folder. She, every time she talks, she knows what she's talking about. It's a fucking amazing thing to watch a press secretary that knows what she's talking about into this position. Like, um, it's great to watch someone like that, that can give out the information and give it precise and don't take shit from journalists. But, Lori doesn't want to have this reasonable conversation because because Kaylee started talking about Chicago, like, she started talking about Chicago and saying how bad the city's been, you know, how bad things are going, it's getting worse, people are getting shot. But the, it's okay, Lori decides to go and uh, tell her, watch your mouth. You watch your mouth. That's great. And this is what Kaylee had to say back. Yeah, my, my response is that I'm very upset about the violence in the streets of her city. You know, she's focused on words, but instead she should be focused on action because, you know, right now, uh, this weekend, what we'll see is uh, hopefully not, but what we've routinely seen are double digit numbers of people dying in her city. So she needs to focus on securing her streets. I understand the truth hurts. The president's written her a letter and offered her help, and she needs to take it because it's inexcusable when children die in the streets. Democrat-run streets of Chicago, uh, Mayor Light, Light, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, Lightfoot, excuse me, yeah. should be focused on that. Lightweight, Lightfoot, whatever Lightweight. you want to. That's great, and it's great that Kaylee was actually able to say something back to her about this stupid behavior she's doing right now. But instead of worrying about the fact that her city's going into complete shit, they were, like within the last three four hours, um, there was a shooting in Chicago. Just recently, this happened, and it was—it's not good. It's a developing situation, and things got really, really bad. So it ended up in a situation where Chicago shooting a funeral home, a funeral home of all places, where a drive-by with black, uh, black assailants shot fourteen people, shot fourteen people, and I believe 
there was a few of those people who died in that situation. But maybe we should take a look at the deputy that tells us what the hell was going on in this situation, because it's... Tell you guys. First Deputy Superintendent Eric Carter. In approximately 18, 30 hours, a black vehicle speeding westbound on 79th Street in the 1000 block began firing at attendees of a funeral. Uh, at that time, the attendees of the funeral exchanged gunfire with the black vehicle. The black vehicle then turned northbound down Carpenter. Upon going northbound down Carpenter, they continued to fire at the attendees of the uh, funeral, at which time the vehicle, midway down the block, uh, crashed and came to a halt. The occupants of the vehicle then exited in multiple directions and fled. We currently have a person of interest uh, being interviewed by area detectives at the area. And out of this incident, there are 14 victims being treated at five separate area hospitals. Conditions are unknown at this time. We currently, uh, the detectives will be conducting a canvas for the rest of this evening and early tomorrow. We are hoping that the uh, community, if you have any video or anybody that knows anything, will uh, help the detectives in their canvas and offer any information that can help solve this crime. How many uh, shots were fired? How many shooters do you think there were? Currently, right now, we have 60 shell casings on the scene. Shooters are unknown at this time for the exchange. 60 shell cases. 60 shell cases. 60 people could have been shot. This was a massive exchange of firearms and firepower during this funeral home, people. Funeral home. Why the fuck is are they allowing this black and black crime? Like that you never hear anyone from the BOM criticize this whole situation where you know black on black crime happens. Because this was what it was eventually. I looked at it a little bit further. This was a black on black crime, and fuck in hell, why this happens? I don't know. So why this shooting happened? Let's talk about mayor. The mayor, what the. Fuck? fuck was going on, I don't know, but she decided to tweet this. Mayor, under no circumstances I'll allow Donald Trump's troops to come to Chicago and terrorize our residents. You've just had a fucking shooting exactly the same time as this was tweeted on her Twitter. Why is she having this exact same time during this incident? It is crazy to my own mind. And she seems pretty stubborn to keep her cell to her cell and she seems to be oh I better make sure my privilege points seem to be okay here it's okay we better make sure we take care of Donald J Trump here because we can't allow what happened to Portland happen to Chicago because it says here in DJHG media Chicago mayor vows to fight Donald Trump administration from helping end the violence in the city why don't you help your police officers instead of trying to defund the police why don't you try and help the residents you were elected to fucking help? No, you don't want to do that. You want to do something else. Crazy, eh? But it looks like players have been answered and Donald Trump is going to be moving in with full force. Because during the situation, like it says here, the Light Food City is, is a war zone for many people. Same article, by the way. Uh, double digit numbers are in Chicagoans called this weekend. A mayor that has impehended tons of gun patrol programs and none of them have worked. We've reported that 65 people in Chicago were shot last weekend and 10 of them were killed in like food answer kind of carnage. And she says to implement more gun t control. You don't implement more gun control. That's not how you stop it. You stop it by going after the bad guys by going after the Antifa protesters, by going after the people that's causing the crimes. Like I said, if I was in charge, I wouldn't want to be in charge because I'll be going at them with full fucking force. But it looks like Donald Trump has answered the prayers of many people of Chicagoans and the feds are coming in. Thank fuck. And we're going to be talking more about the feds getting into situations in the next video, but thank fuck the feds are coming in this time because I think there's a lot of people that will support it because Chicago's been under a mess for weeks. Like, oh, fucking hell, longer than weeks, months. It's, it's like it's like Sadiq Khan of London, but only it's a Chicago version. This mayor has no control of her city whatsoever, and she just allows this stuff to happen to her all the time because it's her Democrat city. Like, again, 
This is a part that you may be going to have a few Chicago city, a few Chicago like cities such as Portland, Chicago, and so on. But we'll talk about that in the next video. So, thank you, Donald Trump, for coming in. Thank you for helping the Chicagoans. Thank you for the people that decided to make this a little fucking hellhole for them. I have big thank you to all the cops out there who's doing their damnedest to, despite not leaving their jobs. Because I bet there's a few of them who've left their jobs for protection of their family because these guys are fucking horrible to work, deal with. Like the Antifa guys, they go after your families and everything. Tucker Carlson can tell you that as much. And I bet big guy go against the BOM movement in the Antifa, I'm going to be targeted too. And I bet I'm going to be fucking killed over here. But... That's a while yet, but I want to say thank you to all those officers out there who's doing their damnedest and all the people out there who's trying to protect their families and kids and everything else because no one should be getting killed over there. No one. Black and black crime, not a good idea. Protect everyone. All lives matter. And I want to give you just end of these two little videos here where this cop was about to get criticized about something. Can't mind what it is you see in the video, and he tells exactly what he's got to go to. He's going to help this little girl because her dad just got killed on black and black crime in Chicago, despite Chicago is one of the highest rates of black and black crime in America. And also, a last mention to Ted Cruz, where he will mention a new legislative bill which will eventually help all these Americans who have lost businesses to the riots, the protesters, and the terrorists for absolutely no reason, hailing responsible to the counties, governors, mayors, and local councils, making them solely responsible for this happening to them, as long as I think they can get around that somehow. But I'm going to let you end up with these two videos, and hopefully, hopefully things get better, guys. Peace. What's your response to some of the people that thought you were being disrespectful by being on your phone and not being attentive to them? Well, I was on my phone, and yes, that's true. I was following developments with a five-year-old little girl sitting on her dad's lap who just got shot in the head by a drive-by shooting. And if some of the people here gave a good goddamn about the victimization of people in this community by crime, I take some of their invective more seriously. The greatest racial disparity in the city of Milwaukee is getting shot and killed. Hello. 80% of my homicide victims every year are African American. 80% of our aggravated assault victims are African American. 80% of our shooting victims who survived their shooting are African American. Now they know all about the last three people that have been killed by the Milwaukee Police Department over the course of the last several years. There's not one of them can name last, one of the last three homicide victims we've had in this city. Now there's room for everybody to participate in fixing this police department and I'm not pretending we're without sin. But this community's at risk, all right. And it's not because men and women in blue risk their lives protecting it. It's at risk because we have large numbers of high-capacity, quality firearms in the hands of remorseless criminals who don't care who they shoot. Now, I'm leaving here to go to that scene. And I take it personally, okay? We're going up there, and there's a bunch of cops processing a scene of a dead kid. And they're the ones that are going to be out there patrolling and stopping sus suspects and they have guns under the front seat. They're the ones that are going to take the risks of their lives to try to clean this thing up. All right? We're responsible for the things we get wrong and we take action. We've arrested cops, we've fired cops, and so on. But the fact is that the people out here, some of them, who had the most to say are absolutely MIA when it comes to the true threats facing this community. And it gets a little tiresome. And when you start getting yelled at, for reading the updates of the kid that gets shot, yeah, you take it personal, okay? Now, no offense, but I'm going up there now. That is the Chicago police uh, holding a press conference. Uh, we're confirmed now, according to the Chicago Tribune, 11, 11 people shot earlier tonight, as many as 17, according to the alderman we have on. We continue with Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. You know, the president is calling this a war, war zone. Senator, we, 70 people shot this weekend, including a 10 and 11-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 10 or 12 murdered this weekend. This is, this is now, this is a war zone. And 60 shell casings, that police officer just announced in tonight's shooting alone. We don't have the total number yet. It's a very difficult, what does a president do when he's offering help and he's getting lectured, but yet these, these governors and mayors don't keep their citizens safe and secure? 
Well, you know, Sean, this is the consequence of the radical and extreme left. When, you, when you're threatening to abolish the police, when you're threatening to defund the police, when you're holding the police back from doing the jobs, we know for a fact the result will be more and more murders, including mass murders like this tonight. We don't know if those individuals shot, if they're going to survive or not. Obviously, our prayers are with them. We know, by the way, one of the consequences of the radical left, tragically, are going to be more mass shootings in schools. Uh, the, the left is arguing for pulling police officers, armed police officers out of schools. The best way to keep our kids safe in schools is having police officers there to protect them. We know there are going to be more physical assaults, more sexual assaults, and, and it isn't complicated. Don't commit violent crime. And if you commit violent crime, you need to be arrested, you need to be locked up, and you need to be put in jail. And, and the Democrats who are facilitating this, they're making a cynical political judgment. It's in their partisan interest. You know, this week, Sean, I'm introducing legislation in the U.S. Senate called the Reclaim Act that provides that anyone who's physically harmed in a lawless autonomous zone or in a riot or anyone whose business is destroyed or home is damaged, that they have a right to sue the local officials, the mayor, the local officials, if they have pulled the police out, if they have willingly ceded authority to a lawless zone and refused to provide law enforcement, then you're entitled to triple damages against these lawless Democratic officials that, that, that are allowing people to be killed. And tragically, what they're doing, what these Democrats are doing is racist because the consequence of this, and you pointed this out earlier in the show, is that a lot more black lives are being lost, a lot more Hispanic lives are being lost, a lot more white lives are being lost. Murders need to stop, and it's the Democrats that are creating the environments for this, and it's wrong. So guys, thank you for watching this video straight to the end. That means I have done something good and have made you guys want to listen to my content. If you guys want to support my content in the future, please be sure to find me on Facebook, Instagram, BitChute, and I'm also on Parler. And also make sure you like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel where we talk about various different projects. And I have many other projects across the platforms as well, such as music, entertainment based topics and other things as well mainly on this politics so thank you guys for watching this video and remember we must keep fighting against these massive platforms that don't want us to speak freely and remember hail the empire